Good afternoon. Yesterday, the city of Dundee gave a new meaning to that uh, worn old phrase, up for the cup. To most of the people at Dens, it meant only a stroll from the house. While the attraction, the local derby, with a piece of important silverware at stake, the Bells League Cup. Now, cold and all as it was, the Dundee public responded well to this unique challenge and lent the occasion a kind of fervour that the city will recall sent the Bells League Cup final. The trophy, highly sought after, as well as the winner's cheque of £24,000, and despite the obvious rivalry, it all seemed at first like a meeting of old mates. Dundee United, the Bells League Cup holders, defending the trophy only 150 yards away from where it's lain for the past year. What an amazing cross fertilization has been between these two clubs, with Jim McLean, the manager of Dundee United, having played down the road here at Dens as a player. And at number four, Ian Phillip, who had served us here in the dark blue jersey of Dundee. And perhaps the one of the most valuable players on the field, most significant, Eamon Bannon, 150,000 from Chelsea two years ago, and who played so remarkably well for Dundee United in the League Cup last season. And there is the Dundee team, which has the same kind of a two-way process going on because uh, Donald Mackay, their manager, played in goal for Dundee United. And uh, Billy Williamson saw service in the tangerine jersey. And they have even uh, Cammy Fraser. Fraser, who, man who scored that goal up at Aberdeen, uh, he was actually at one time an S signing for Dundee United. And there's a the referee today, Bob Valentine, the local man, walks as a compositor totally unperturbed uh, about this occasion so he tells me although he's breathing a bit deeply there realizing it was a local man some people thought there would be too much stress on him but he was very cool about it when i spoke to him before the game well the amazing thing about this cup final is that it has attracted uh, the biggest crowd at dense park for a game between these two teams for many a year and it's not just that it's the atmosphere the tension the build-up this is really the very best kind of atmosphere you could expect for a cup final. Dundee United to kick off in a rather wintry setting about uh, three hours ago when we were here this morning. The pitch was beautiful, but with the sun going in and with the flurries of snow that we've had, it may be very tricky out there for the opening minutes until the players get their feet. Dundee United uh, really should be expected to take the initiative early on. That's a bad one. United trying to exploit this. Pain might be a bit too hard. Slides away. That is good skill by Sinclair. He had the support there, but uh, Billy Williamson taking his eye right off it. Pain. Sturrock picking up well again. That's a good run forward by Pay. That looks dangerous. Beyond Dodge, Bannon. And Dundee were really ripped apart by that run. Still in all, Sinclair with the break. And now Andy Geddes. Taking all the time in the world. And Shadler gives support in the far side. The expected cross and Coppell should be behind that. Well. That run we saw was the most penetrating in the game so far. That sudden little push through by Payne. And his cross wasn't so accurate. It was well above the head of everybody. And uh, Eamon Bannon could hardly do anything with it. Play a bit ragged in midfield just now. Players, I think, finding it... Difficult to get possession and do something on it. Dodds on the break. How's Dodd? Dodds was calling for it inside. He gets his shot in. Well, that was a terrible mistake by the Dundee defence. They really gave that ball away. Dodds doing well, picked up by Stark. And all the time, Dodds was inside and screaming for the pass. When it came, he could only just scoof at it. Dodds, it's a neat little flick. Barr had to get there. You simply cannot give Sturrock an opportunity on the left just inside the penalty area like that. It's got to be covered. Payne doing the diagonal run and that'll be a corner kick. Graham Payne, number eight. People have thought in the past that uh, his uh, stamina has been a bit suspect in games, but there's a lot of work.
pain to take this himself. Well, Pedigree was there, well covered though, and Glennie and McGeechee playing a very steady game, very careful game. That's a good looking ball. Dodge line free at the back, that's Hegarty. Couldn't even get the semblance of a shot into it. What a side foot pass. Oh, good interception by Payne. This is the man making United tick at the moment. Again, it's good, and Pedigree right off it. Hegarty couldn't get the shot in properly. There was good covering. I said, Magici and Bobby Glenny, very tight, very solid in the middle of that Dundee defence. Well, looked as if Dave Daly was caught in two lines. Looked as if he would go with it uh, for the head. I think probably the wind held it back. Toronto United. Stark. Dodge creeping in at the back and once again covering up well by Dundee. Billy Pettigrew. There's nobody on the left all this time. Only Shader who'd made that original interception. Sinclair has a running there, and inside him, Stephen. Sliding tackle by Holt, free kick. I think it's a case of a lecture to him. John Holt, who came into the United team uh, at the tail end of the League Cup run last season, played very well. Wow, well, he's given a corner kick. It's not a free kick, it's a corner kick. Hegarty right underneath it. And he us almost got his shot in. Shadler. And that goes in the back of the net, but it's a free kick. Clearly a free kick as uh, Sinclair went in. You could see as he went towards the goalkeeper, there was a bit uh, almost of intimidation there. The referee spotted that, certainly went in the back of the net. Down by Hegarty. And Glennie and um, Magici at this moment in time have meant so much to Dundee, holding the defence together that gets a quick spot forward. There's Starak. There it is again. Magici having to do the control and bring it down. Payne, that's a good looking ball. Willie Pettigrew. Starak with a chance. Oh. Well, you know, nine times out of ten, Starak would have put that away. This is the sort of ball he loves to. You couldn't fault Pettigrew, he did everything right. The pass was right. And somehow or other, it was all to the side with his body and underneath it. And I think ultimately he was quite embarrassed. Stark, sliding, slithering ball. Oh, beautifully picked up by Mackey, but he can't. Push it away now, Holt. Stevens in. I don't think he'll keep it in. He does. He has. There's a good run forward by Williamson. And suddenly Dundee lifted the game up there. And the youngster right at the heart of it. Steven got his chance, raced after it, kept it in well, pushed it back. Good forward run by Williamson eventually. And that kind of thrust is what they need. Gitchi. Nicely cut back. Pettigrew. Oh, the goalkeeper would have got that in any case, but Barr simply indicating that he wasn't going to take any chances. 
Good turning by Pettigrew. I don't think there was any doubt the goalkeeper would have got to that. Graham Payne. A bit of a scramble there as Pettigrew went for it. Neatly taken out though. Geddes and then Cammy Fraser. Back by Phillip. Disappointed looking ball by Phillip all the same in good possession. Round with the outside of his foot for Dodds. Les Barr covers it. Stunner coming across for it. This is what Stunner's good at. That's excellent play. Dodge with a chance. He's done it. Practically on the halftime whistle. one nothing for Dundee United. Well, let's get 10 out of 10 to Stunner for the way he created that. There is no more difficult a position than that. Back to the goal. Defenders between you and the goal, and yet he manages to wriggle round and curl it over. And that, by the way, was a textbook header by Dodds. Up, over the ball, done with it, and no goalkeeper could have saved it. And that could be a rather stunning blow to Dundee. Would have been very valuable for them to have held out. And there goes the halftime whistle. Well, I'll tell you, as a game on a rather bleak and cold afternoon, that's what it required, a goal of that calibre. Um, it looked as if we might go in with a deadlock and perhaps Dundee getting the benefit of it. I thought particularly that uh, Graham Kane has been in and out of the United team showing a lot of spark and dibble in his play, a lot of aggression and flair and skill, and this has been causing a lot of upset to the D on that far side. And Sturrock, by the way, should have put the ball in the back of the net with a lovely little cut back to him, and that perhaps was the best chance of the game. The D had the ball in the back of the net, certainly, but I think palpably a free kick. And of course, just when it looked as if it was going to be a very cold first 45 minutes, that exquisite play by Paul Sturrock, and then eventually Dodds coming in from the back. And so to a second half in which we really have to see something of a fight back by the home club. So off go Dundee with a fight on their hands. They were the club, the first club, to win the League Cup twice in succession. But at this stage, the uh, indications are United might equal that record. And quite simply, the better team is in the league. And he's sweeping it away. Nearly with it. Come on, those Bannon to take it. Nice neat little chip there. Crowded Dundee goal mouth. A good running back for Pell. Just cut off there once again by Magicci. Neatly played out by Coppell. United looking confident and strong. This is Bannon. Pettigrew couldn't get it round. Oh, well, here's Payne with a chance. Oh, great save. First clear-cut chance in the second half. Five minutes gone. Falling to Graham Payne. Suddenly coming to him. Did the right thing. Good balance there, you can see. Letting fly. And uh, Bobby Geddes, just outside of his goal line. Good goalkeeping. Good culling ball. That's a post. That was so near. Paul Hegarty up for that. Now, normally he comes driving in from the back, but that was a near post when he wanted to flick it with the back of his head, and lo and behold, the post was at the back. 
Well, the break's got to be fast. Geddes. Fraser was shouting for it, and the run through. Stephen can only really stop that. Well away by Hegarty. United come out bad and makes a hash of it. Went right off balance. Very tight in midfield, but Schiller getting his first touch of it. Sinclair. Stephen going in with a chance. Good run by Stephen. There's a great chance. Phil for a penalty kick. It is not given. But I do think there was a dive by the player. And once again, Bob Valentine showing some excellent control in this game as Stevens went forward in a very good run he judged that not to be a penalty and I agree with him Yanis much more spirited drive forward by Dundee all the same we at least expect that from them now at this stage one behind Well, beautifully picked up there by Stella. Now Pettigrew. Pettigrew on the run and good covering once again by Magicci. Superb little flick there by Paul Stella. Well swept across and Bannon. Bannon went after that uh, courageously to start off, but he seemed to duck away from it as the ball reached him. The chance going up from the respective supporters have been rather quiet in this opening spell of this uh, second half. more noise about the ground but it's nicely read though by Hegarty well McMackie was on the outside get us again spirited drive forward again by Geddes good running by Stunnock on the left he had to turn well and does this is where he's good Stunnock still Stunnock with a shot oh Now Sturrock is showing how brilliant he can be. Has long spells during the season when we don't see all that much from him, but today we've seen some of his best. His turning, his running, his control, and he did the right thing there, just swerving away in a deflection bring in the corner. Payne. Oh, that's a bar. Must be, yes. Sturrock getting the touch. 2-0. 14 minutes of the second half gone and I think that will effectively retain the cup for United even as a long spell to go because there's so much in top and Stunnock rightfully getting that goal because after that uh, run that produced the corner the ball coming across, the ball against the bar rather loose covering I thought and there he was, sharp as ever, just to nudge it in have certainly done just enough of the second half to uh, put them beyond reach I would think even though Dundee are pressed forward uh, valiantly in the last 15 minutes Kane Pettigrew turns beautifully on that will try to get to that goal line and he does he gets a corner out of it but uh, what should have been swept across just a bit slow in parting with it good initial turn by him that's a header again brilliant save on the set Paul Sturrock 3-0 37 minutes of the second half gone once again, a corner kick goal. This time, it was Hegarty who got his head to it. Wasn't fully cleared. And yet again, Paul Sturrock notching it away. 
Went into injury time by Owat. And there goes the final whistle for the second year in succession. Dundee United, the one, the Bells League Cup. And uh, thoroughly deserve to do so. They have showed the class today. They've been well organized. They did everything right. And of course, a great individual performance by Paul Sturrock enthralling the Dundee United support. There he is in there, number 10. I thought he was quite superb today. And the Dundee team very sportingly going across to their own support to congratulate them for the way not only they've deported themselves this afternoon, but the way they followed their club right through to the final. And that, perhaps, is one of the most heartening sights of the day, is it not? The defeated team with the supporters' scarves coming on. There's a very good rapport. Well, the players have had a long journey up. And there we go. Hamish McAlpin taking the cup. Presented by Tony Derry of Bell's Whiskey. Behind him, Paul Hegarty. supporters are. Dave Dodds has scored that opening goal, that very vital goal, just on the stroke of half-time. And there we see, away in the background, the massed ranks of the United supporters. And full marks to both sets of supporters, especially to those of the losing side, who took a bitter blow on the chin and seemed, nevertheless, to see the defeat only in terms of Dundee's developing future. And indeed, I think that's the best way to look at it, for United were simply in a different league. They had a game one on the halftime whistle on low. Although they seemed to go into lower gear in the second half, they always looked as if they could pick up the pace whenever they wanted. Now, Jim McLean got the best out of almost everybody, and long before the end, we knew United would equal their opponent's record of taking the cup in successive years. Well, afterwards, I talked to Jim McLean and Hamish McAlpin, and put it to the manager firstly that his overall strategy seemed to have worked out to perfection. Well, I think you could, it's easy to sit and say that one team will win and at the end of the day it's far easier after the match here. It's easy in hindsight, but uh, the only problem that we had today as far as I was concerned was uh, getting the attitude right. And I still feel, as I said off, over and over again all week, that Celtic gave us a very timely reminder that it's not just about playing football. Mm -hmm. And you, you must have been happy, come. yes, you, but you really must have been happy with the way the players did things at the right times for you today. Well, they scored the three goals and that's important, but uh, I'm never really happy with the performance, although uh, over the nine years there's been one or two of them, especially the one against Celtic at Parkhead, uh, I was very pleased with that one. But today we can play a lot better than we did do today, but I felt that they've taken everything into consideration in as much as the pressure of the cup final, but uh, it was mm. far, far worse mm. uh, because a local derby uh, against Dundee. This is a match that you just daren't lose. Mm. Did you think it took the sting out of the game, the flair out of the game today, the local derby element in it, Tamish? Definitely the pressure was built up. You know, if, yeah. because it was a derby, it was yeah. that was the only thing everybody was talking about for, you know, a fortnight or... I don't want it to detract at all from Dundee. I think they did very well to get to the final, but uh, you had much less to do than the other goalkeeper and therefore had the opportunity maybe to look at where the, the, the way the game was going. Um, you must have been, uh, I think, like the manager, delighted with the, the snap goal just before half-time, which was a, a, almost a killer goal, wasn't it? Well, it's, it's a great time to score, you know, just before half-time. It puts everybody, puts their heads down when they go in to get their pep talk or whatever it is. Uh, we were a bit boosted. We knew we played well. We, were, we played badly the first half, I thought. Uh, we still had a few chances. Uh, we're boosted up with that. They're, they've got to go in and say, well, they've got to come at us a wee bit more, mm. uh, leave themselves a bit vulnerable at the back. Now, Jim, you always make a point of not singling players out, but I'll single a player out for you. You can contest it if you like. I thought Sturrock was the man of the match, as far as I was concerned, and showed how brilliant he can be. Sturrock, without any shadow of doubt, was the best player in the park, in my opinion, and it's not often that I agree with the media. Mm. But, uh, <laughs> to be honest, I, I single out Graham Payne, because all the heartaches that I've had in the game not because of the type of person. Graham Payne's a tremendous type of person. He's never caused me one bit of problem. But the hardest decision I have to make is when I leave Graham Payne out of the team. And at times I do this because at times he's not just as determined as he has shown this season. And I was more pleased than any other person 
mm. for Graham Payne winning yeah. the, the trophy. Last year he sat as sub, but that's not the same. Today yeah. he played the 90 minutes and did well. He was. They were almost uh, kind of poacher-like goals that uh, Paul Sturrock got in the second half, weren't they? Just picking up the odd chance it came to him. Any goal that Dundee United score, whether it's uh, poaching or whatever, it's a good goal as far as I'm concerned. Well, and, uh, over the piece, I think that uh, without any shadow doubt, we deserve to win the cup. And no disrespect to Dundee. There was a, a, a phase in the second half when you seemed to be coasting. You know, you seemed to, the players seemed to realise that the game was well won, Hamish. Um, I think after the second goal went in, everybody said, oh, well, you know, two goals up. But uh, in a derby, anything can happen. They had, uh, well, I think it was 1-0, uh, the guy Ray Stevens, he went through. Mm -hmm. And given his credit, you know, he could have run into me. He tried to jump over and he hit in the head. He claimed for a penalty. The referee did the right thing. Uh, there's no way I can touch the guy. He jumped over the top of yes. me. Uh, that could have been a turning point of the game. Uh, maybe one of the most surprising things was the cup presentation because I was expecting Paul Hegarty to pop his head up just to the left of you here, Jim, to get to be presented with a cup when it was that, Hamish McAlpin. That is definitely a great story. And Paul Hegarty came to me the next day after we beat Celtic and uh, actually said to me, and his words were, when we win the cup, we would like uh, Hamish McAlpin to go up and collect the cup for the service he's given the club. And I was really pleased that... Uh, this happened because it was without any shadow doubt it was Paul Hegarty and other players that felt it and I think it was uh, a right decision. Well you better hand me that cup over so I can put some more of the champagne in it by the way. The whole camera crew wants some of this. <laughs> I better get the boss a drink. I better get the boss a drink because I've never back. seen him drunk. <laughs> <laughs> Mother, close your eyes. <laughs> Oh dear, dear, dear. Don't worry, Mrs. McLean, I have news for you. Your son went back to his well-known teetotal ways. Well, so well. And of course to the neighbours who didn't have far to travel back with the cup. Until next week, goodbye. Sturrock coming across for it. This is what Sturrock's good at. That's excellent play. Dodge for the chance. He's done it. Payne. Oh, that's the ball. Must be, yes. Well, that's a header again, brilliant save on the same. Paul Sturrock, 3-0.